Rhythm is the company. Dream is the product. That's what it looks like when it's on your head. This is one in real life. How can wearing this thing on your head improve your sleep? Well, science says that certain sounds can help improve your deep sleep. So what they've done is they've created this headband, a little bit of cushion there on top. Now you wear this on your head, plugs into USB right there. There's no Bluetooth, no Wi-Fi going on while you're asleep, so you can just sleep without anything going on. There's no communication during that time. But it is storing data about how you sleep, and then later on it can transfer it to an app and say, like, here's when you reached your deep sleep, here you were in REM, here you were a little bit tossy and turny, whatever. And uh, what they do when you hit deep sleep to improve your sleep, it's not just analytics, it's right down here, you have some sensors and also some bone induction sort of sound transfer devices because scientifically certain sound waves will make you sleep better. So when you hit your deep sleep, it's like, oh, we know you're in deep sleep right now. Let's go ahead and start sending some of those sound waves via bone, in bone induction. Therefore, you get better sleep. And the app should be able to monitor that and be like, hey, you're sleeping better now after a couple of weeks. So pretty interesting product here. The device is going to be about 300 US dollars. They're based in Paris and also in San Francisco. And if you're having trouble sleeping, it might be interesting to look at. I'm not sure how it's going to be wearing this on your head, but I want to note that it does not cover the back of the head. It does go on the side of the head. So if you're, you know, a side pillow sleeper, you know, it may be something to consider. But if you sleep on the back of your head or whatever, not too bad. Again, rhythm dream. This happy little guy right here could be your new water taxi. This is Sea Bubbles. And this is um, something that's pretty much very new. It's going to be coming out maybe soon. Who knows? And the general idea here is no emissions, very low power, and it's an electric vehicle that comes out of the water. So it essentially hovers, as you can see here on the bottom. This will act as a wing. And what happens is once you get to around seven knots, this particular unit will lift out of the water so that only these pieces here are sticking in the water and it's making uh, almost no wake, almost no waves behind it because it's just cutting through the water. Now here in France, it lifts out of the water at seven knots and uh, they're allowing it to go up to 10 knots. But in America, you know, it'll lift out of the water at uh, 12 knots and possibly go up to 25 knots. So that'll be really cool. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this over here. Their primary business model is going to be like sea taxi. So imagine, you know, you're hanging out in San Francisco, you need to get across the bay to work. And, you know, you call this just like with Uber, you call the app and say, hey, four or five of us, we need to go to a business meeting right now. We don't have time for the stupid bridge. The Bay Bridge is, is terrifying. We're not going to do it. So you hop into one of these, it jets across the water at, uh, you know, 25 knots, way more economical as far as, uh, you know, uh, uh, well, maybe not, maybe it'll cost a little bit, who knows, but it'll be uh, better for the environment. That'll, that'll be nice. And you just fly across the water. So we'll have a couple of uh, jets here on the back or as demonstration units. This is not real, <laughs> you know. But um, this will be your propulsion units. And is that carbon fiber on there? Is it just for the prototype, or is that also going to be for the real deal? Yeah, yeah, carbon fiber on there. So this could be your new uh, sea taxi there, electric vehicles. And then for private you know, individuals or maybe some private sales, we could see some larger vehicles like this with the same technology on uh, the bottom of its engineered so that it comes out of the water and floats at a certain uh, speed. And then it just cuts through the water, leaving a very small wake behind it. So the guys here um, are... Um, Doing some very interesting things. All right, speed up in Hacker House. I've made something I really need in my life. This is a printer. It's like a very, very slow printer, but hey, it's using a, pr a pencil to print that. And what I'm thinking is uh, we just program in a few variations, get someone's signature, get an ink pen, and then sign all kinds of documents. This is basically going to make the entire uh, document signing thing, the whole bureaucracy is going to collapse because of this pen right here, this pen and pencil printer. And I'm literally just going to sign all kinds of ridiculous documents with, like, Barack Obama's signature. Speed up in Agra House. We're going to get there here. I actually got uh, around uh, half a million dollars for this thing. Damn. 3D printing people. Z3 Lab has created something very interesting. It's a uh, new titanium ceramic nanocomposite. It's the, it's the hardest additive printing material on the planet. You're basically printing metal. So let's take a look at this here. So you can see here, you're, you're printing metal. It's a titanium and uh, ceramic nanocomposite, and that means it's gonna have the softness of zirconia, but also titanium's uh, malleability. And uh, you'll be able to use this in a lot of different medical applications. For instance, we got some dental implants right here. This dental imp implant here is uh, hollow. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow blood and cells to form around this, so your body does not reject it. Also, since it has the ceramic components, it's less likely uh, that your body will reject it. It'll probably just become part of your body and your body will be like, oh, cool. Another thing that's interesting about this material is due to the ceramic components, it's going to be somewhat uh, flexible. So like your bones and other things like that, it'll be a really interesting material that you can print, put it in your body. It's not gonna be rigid like all the bolts and everything we use in medical uh, stuff right now. So 
it should be really cool to see how this works out as far as making you know advances in the medical field. Keep an eye on this kind of stuff. Uh, lots of other you know things you could use it for industrial applications. I'm sure you guys could even grab some of this powder here at home. There's the powder over there, ZTI powder, and make some really 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 strong uh, stuff. Again, hardest material in the world for additive manufacturing.